Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week. In this scenario we'll deal with flat roofs, also sloping flat roofs, and also variable materials and line overrides. So this is going to deal with roof scenarios and uh, hopefully you'll get some tips out of it. What we're looking to cr uh, create is if I go to this little let's say uh, PDF you can see here we've got the roof and it slopes in and then also we have these little cricket of our adjustments in the middle. So what we can do is create that in Revit, but we may not get exactly what we're looking for, so we'll talk about some ways to make it look right. Back in Revit, let's give it a shot. So first thing we need to do is put a roof in here. So I'm going to go up top and put a roof in. Now before I do that, I'm going to tab over these walls, okay? And you'll notice they're a basic wall type, right? And uh, we'll also notice that it goes up to the roof level plus three feet. So we'll actually have a parapet just so you get some background information. There it is. Okay. Now uh, we don't need to do the whole this as big as one of those. I'm going to shorten this thing up a bit just so it's easy for me to work with. Now, um, time to put a roof in. We drop this down. You'll see there's lots of roof types. We'll use roof by footprint. We'll use a flat roof so we turn off the slopes. Do we want to overhang? No. Do we want to extend into walls? Yes. I'll hover over the wall. You'll see the blue line is in the middle, a dash line. It's space bar. It's a little tip. Pick it. And now my purple line or sketch line is in the core of the wall. I hit finish. And it'll ask me if we want to clean it up. I hit yes. Now what that's doing is if I cut a section through here and we take a look at that roof. Now I'm going to take this section. I'm going to drag it back a little bit. We'll create a sliver. We don't need to see a lot. So double click on it. And what you'll see is if I go to let's say find detail. I'll also change the scale here in case we put some annotation in later. You'll see how I cleaned it up and brought this, the structural into the, the core there. Alright, so now we'll talk about sloping roofs. Now the first thing we'll do is we need some basic uh, reference planes in here. So I'm going to start the reference plane tool and I will roll to the center here and I pick and I drag down. Now one thing we don't need are the walls right now. So you can use the isolate tool, that's a little sun sunglasses here. Or you can then take maybe take all the walls, right click, hide in view, um, hide in view, category. So it just makes it easy to work with. So there's our center, and I'll also put some more in. I grab that again, I'm going to put maybe uh, one, two, and maybe three. Actually, going to go four, five in here. So I'm going to put a few extras, okay? Now, uh, what we're going to do is we need to evenly space all these. So to evenly space them, I'll go up top, I'll use my dimension tool, and I'll start with the outside edge. I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, place it, and say, equal. You'll notice how all my planes have actually uh, fell right into place. Now we'll take a quick look back again. You'll notice that starts with, a, if we're looking at these little diamonds, it starts on a half a diamond and comes down diamond, diamond, diamond. So we'll do the same thing in here. So um, we may need uh, a line over here and here so we have points. Again, I will uh, take this element, but this time I'm just going to copy it. And I'll use my copy command, make sure multiple's turned on. Also constrain, and I'll pick a point, and I'll drag over maybe two foot six over there and I'll drag over here five foot. Alright so there we go now we got all of our basic math laid out and what we're going to do with this roof is we're going to add uh, some shape editing to it. We'll actually add split lines and then once we do that we'll modify the sub elements. So I'll start up add split lines. Now sometimes what happens is it's turned off. See right here? Chain. Make sure chain's turned on to make it easier. Now I pick from there and I come over here and instead of picking that intersection alright now in this instance I only want to go half so I'm going to come back over here like so. And I can then start to triangulate this thing out, right? Now you'll notice that the what's happening is it's getting all doing all kind of crazy stuff for me. But uh, don't panic, we can we're gonna be able to straighten all that out. I'll type in SI, that's gonna force a snap intersection, and there we go. I'm gonna hit escape on that, and I'm gonna start again, add split lines, and I'll walk from the opposite side. Intersection, intersection, SI, intersection. I could go into my object snaps and, and turn them all on and off, but this is just as easy as I, and we pick it there. All right, so we have is these points. Now, the outside roof is assuming it's all zero. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to hit Modify Sub-Elements. Now, when I pick on this, you'll see it says zero, and this corner is zero. So what we'll do is we're going to add a negative number here to slope that roof in. So let's say from this point to here is three inches. So I'm going to grab that object, okay? And I'm going to say, you are negative 3 inches. And I have no idea why I jumped up so high. Okay. Let's hit cancel on that. 
So we're getting some weird numbers popping up here. Let's check it out in 3D. Okay, for some reason we got a wild point over on the end here. So uh, he went kind of squirrely on us. So modify sub elements. I'm going to grab him. Whoop, and I'm not sure how, why high he went so high. We'll type in zero. And he should drop down. And you'll see how our roof is actually adjusting as we adjust the points. So we can we can physically walk through this roof and go up and down with the points and the roof will flex. Now you'll notice this point again is way up high. So I'm going to come in here, grab him, and I'll also set him to zero. So uh, our roof kind of did go a little squirrely there, but not a real big deal. So now we're all back. So what I'm going to do is now walk through here. I'm going to say I want that one to be negative three inches. Uh, what it does, it drops that point. That point goes down. Okay. Now these are all zeros. So we can come in here, and this, you may have to figure out what you want these to be ahead of time. But I'll roll over this point. If it'll let me, go ahead and roll over in 3D. Sometimes I have to tab a couple times. Now, let's go move to these, and we'll do the rest in a moment. So now you can either pick the lines, or you can pick the element like so. Now, if I know this line is going to go down, I'm a, I may want to pick a point here. And that one's going to be negative 2.5 inches, because it's not it's going as far down as the other. And I'll do the same here. Grab this guy, uh, negative 2.5 inches. OK, so it's starting to triangulate the roof uh, out. Now, I'm going to go back to plan view. So we'll go back to the roof level. And we'll continue on with these little elements here. Grab the roof, modify sub-elements, and we're going to grab this guy here. And again, I'm going to put him at uh, negative 2.5 inches. All right. And then we'll do the same with this guy. Uh, grab him negative uh, 0.25. Uh, no, that's wrong. Negative 2.5 inches. All right. So uh, that, that should be looking good, at least on these right here. Now you'll see these ex ex extra ones that are popping up. I'm not going to worry about that. We'll just hit Escape a couple times and get out of that. Now I'm going to double click on here, and I want you to notice what's happened to the roof. You'll see how the roof is actually sloping down. You'll notice that the material is actually sloping. Like, hey, look at that. Um, there is a material in here. And that is the insulation. Let's go here and it may be shaded. And you'll see that the insulation starts over here thick, as you see here. And then it, it slowly tapers down. How is that happening? Let's take a moment and look at the roof. If I roof type, if I hit edit type and I go to edit structure, inside of here you'll notice that it says variable. Let's go to preview. If I turn off the variable on this, the roof will continue to, f the whole thing will flex, including the structure, metal deck, etc. Let's hit OK on that. And hit OK. You'll see how the whole thing flexes. We say, well, what we want is a nice smooth deck, and we'll use the insulation as the variable. And that's pretty much what was happening a moment ago. Go back to Edit Type. We say Structure. What materials do you want to var uh, vary? Pick one. Hit OK. What happens is everything else becomes horizontal, and that material then tapers, and anything above it follows it also. So there we go as far as the, the tapering. Now I will mention another thing. Let's go over here to uh, roof again. If I was to go and edit this guy, I fired up and I hit edit footprint. Let's say I had a, a, a hole in here and I drew a little rectangle like so. When I hit finish, watch what happens. See all these holes get reset to zero. So now what I have is kind of a, a mess. Let me drag it, this on over there and take a look at it. Instead of having a nice slope going across, what it does is, whoop, flip that the wrong way. What's happening is um, it goes see, it goes flat and then a drastic drop. So we don't want that. So we'll go back to our roof again. I'm now going to edit the roof. So we'll grab the roof again, edit the footprint, and we'll remove that out. Um, I'll delete that. Should just a little window. There we go. So what we want to do is I'm going to hit finish on that and put it back. If you want to punch a hole in here and keep the slopes, go back to architecture. You'll see a thing called a shaft opening. Uh, there's uh, multiple um, openings that you can use. The shaft opening works pretty good. I'll come in here and draw a rectangle. Now you'll notice that it says, from the footing, go up 20 feet. Uh, so you'll have to play with the height of this thing as needed. But what it does, it cuts through floors, ceilings, and roofs. Now, when I hit finish, watch what happens to my slope lines. See, they don't change. So the hole remains the same. Notice the slope still, con it still ha continues with that slope. So uh, something to consider there. Okay, you may have to add some adjustments around here for, you know, drainage, but you can see how that hole is adjusted. Okay, so uh, we're now going to go ahead and, and delete that element. To delete it, roll over it, hit tab, see how I highlight it. That says that is a shaft opening, and I'll delete it, so it's out. Okay, the final thing here is you'll notice that when we get out of this, 
the roof looks good, but it's got all these other, all this other line work. You know, like, dude, that, that's kind of sucky. All right, so we're going to now do a little bit of uh, cleaning up. Just for visual purposes, I'm going to take these grids, and I'm going to right-click, Hide in View, Category. Okay, so they go away. Again, uh, we're looking for something clean. we got these extra lines. Just to verify, so there's no smoke and mirrors, I'm going to go up top to Annotate, and we can actually use Spot Elevation. Uh, spot Elevations will tell us where we are. Notice I pick here. you notice that it has a certain height, and then I'll come out to here, and I'll check it, and you'll see it has a certain height again about a half inch below the other one. So there we go. Now, final thing here is we don't need these extra lines. They're just making it look nasty. Now, when we cut a section through here, let's back up a little bit. According to how this is laid out, it should slope down and then flatten a little bit and then slope back up. Let's verify that that's happening. You'll see it slopes down, flattens out a little bit right there, as you can see, and then it goes right back up. Okay. So how do we get rid of all the extraneous lines? Let's go turn everything on. So I'm going to hit uh, unhide everything. I'm going to turn my walls back on, unhide and view, category. You can also just hit this little button right here. Okay. Now, time to get rid of lines we don't want. So in Revit, you get everything about where you need it. And then the final, the final trick is to go ahead and use some modify or, let's say, overriding tools. And we're going to use what's called the line work tool. This is one of my favorites because we can actually take lines and make them look different. Let's say, for instance, I want to take a particular line, like maybe this one and this one, and I want to make it dashed. I can take those lines and say, well, I want them to be, let's say, hidden lines. I select the element, and you'll see it is now showing up as hidden. Pretty easy. Um, those lines, if, if the points change, that follows. Now, what we're really going to do is we're going to go back here, line work, and I'm going to say make these lines invisible. Now, this is per view. So I'll say, I grab this guy, notice he's invisible, 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 invisible. And we can actually walk through here and make it look right. Now the math's right, as you can see from my pointers up above. Uh, what we have is, we've got this, uh, our point's looking good. Everything looks nice. Now if you wanted to, you could come in here and put uh, one more line. You could either do it with line work or you can grab it, uh, excuse me, grab the roof. Let's go ahead and grab that roof. And I'll add uh, a split line. And we'll add it from, let's say, here, that point to that point. Okay. Uh, now it looks good. So now it looks just like we had in our previous drawing. So uh, this is how you would, uh, again, slope the roofs. I'm going to go to 3D so you can actually see it. Now, again, if you're trying to show it in 3D, like, oh, man, I want to show it, but these lines are bothering me. Uh, it's just kind of the function of the of the application. So what I could do is invisible lines, and I could just... I can do it in any ver any any location. So there we go. Uh, you may actually take these and get rid of them in this view. You may say, you know, I don't really need that line work in this view because I'm in 3D. So let's go ahead and type in VV as in Victor, Victor. And we'll go down to Roofs. As you go down to Roofs, we expand it out a little bit. And you'll see we have all these different uh, aspects that we can adjust. So I'm going to go ahead and turn all these subsets off and see if it will actually get rid of it. We hit OK on that. Apply. OK and you'll see they're gone. So the roof looks good in 3D. If I'm showing do a little presentation or what, it's not showing all the all that information, but that's just a little trick we can do. I'll go back to roofs and uh, uh, where are roofs, okay, oh, and we'll turn all that stuff back on. Hit OK. Alright, so um, that is how we can make our roofs look good in Revit. Hope you enjoyed the tip. If you have any questions, uh, email us or check us out on the web at thebimguys.com or our YouTube page, which is YouTube forward slash CAD University.